from our SOA Live. Excellent. <coughs> so for those um, who are just tuning in on Facebook, and I'm sorry again to you Zoom people who saw this, uh, but um, a couple of just points about tonight's uh, session. We, first of all, would like to learn tonight in the Rafua Shlema as, as a merit for the healing of, of a friend of mine who is, um, is in the hospital with, uh, with COVID-19, Simcha Yassel ben Malka Chana. <clears throat> we should have a Rafua Shlema. We should all learn in his behalf in Davin um, that he should have a Rafua Shlema, a, a full healing. And the, the learning that we do tonight should be a merit for that. In addition, I posted, uh, you again, you Zoom people, you saw this, but I did post on our Facebook page a, a link that you can even, has a QR code, you can even scan your phone and, um, and contribute to a fund that we created to help people in our community um, who are in dire need of support, helping pay rent, and, um, and we would appreciate you know, if you're able to help out at this time. <clears throat> I know it would make a huge difference and uh, such a tremendous chesed. So, yeah. especially now, I feel like we're all, the whole country is hoarding, you know, <laughs> trying to get stuff because who knows what's going to happen. And um, to be able to take some of that and to buy, to be able to buy towards or to help someone else is, you know, it's really an opportune time to keep us focused yeah. and not just go crazy amidst everything. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And I realized actually that once we went live, I was, I was rocking my cowboy hat. Um, so I should just explain why that was. The last two days I was uh, holed up in our dungeon downstairs. We had this really cool office and not a lot, a lot of light. <clears throat> and I started, started like bugging out. Hey Rose, welcome back, good to see you. I started bugging out and uh, <clears throat> I realized, you know, we live in Colorado, a lot of us here at least uh, tuning in. And it's like 65 degrees every day and the sun's out. So I set up shop outside, uh, pulled out a table, started working out there. I realized the sun was just so intense, I needed to, uh, to rock the, uh, the hat. So I forgot to take it off, but I guess uh, How did we're it indoors. Did it, it did great, it blocks the sun from all sides. It's just like, uh, it, it absorbs the sun from everywhere and it just keeps it out of my, my beautiful face. So it, uh, it worked uh, very, very well, but it's not sunny anymore. So I'll we'll just rock the old. Uh, Hi, Annie. Uh, Ross. Ross is here. Oh, I love uh, Ross. I love you, man. Old college friend. Good to see you. Don, love your posts. Ari. Hey, guys. Good to have everyone with us. Um, okay, so should we? Let's start. Let's start. Okay. Yeah. So this is a very special subject, near and dear to both of our hearts, from <laughs> from pickles with love. All is love. All, all is fair in love and pickles. Uh, <laughs> A, a real romantic uh, story, a, rom a, a rocom, as we say, the story of us. Um, we kind of, uh, how did we, we get to decide to start talking about this? So, oh, can I say? Yeah. Okay, so since we're home and we're not going out at night, hey, <coughs> Kayla, hey, Steven, um, we were cleaning our room a little bit. And just like for my last class that I gave, I found a notebook and used that um, when we were cleaning our room. We also came across, so little backstory, when we were, when we met in high school, and I'm, we're going to go into the story a little bit, but a lot. A lot. Um, so I had in my room a computer and a file cabinet, and I used to actually, hey Leah, I used to print our emails that we would send each other back and forth, because like, who talked on the phone, and sometimes I would also print our um, instant message conversations. And I just had folders and folders of all of that. So when we were cleaning out our room, we went through it and it really inspired us to. Um, Swear you have to stay in bed. Remember what we said? You want the slumber party with your sisters tomorrow? <laughs> Mommy. Okay, I'll, I'll. Uh, I got you. You're doing good. Okay, come okay. Sure. So we were going through these old romances emails and things and um we realize you know when we talk about relationships that a lot of what we saw um we sorry okay focus a lot of what we saw in our conversations are things that we want to talk about about relationships and like you see them kind of like coming out and how those ideas or values play out and so we thought it would be not just fun, 
so you don't have to <coughs> tune into your favorite what'd you call it rocom rocom i think it's romantic comedy huh. my favorite as a kid was um cinderella story really how about you I think I cried in that one. Yeah. Does Legally Blonde count? Rom-com. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> rom-com. Uh, feel free to chime in, by the way, with your yeah. favorite uh, rom-coms. Um, yeah, it, this is kind of an interactive uh, session as well. So yeah. uh, rom-com. Thank you, Thanks, Zach, guys. as well. Okay. Rom-com. <laughs> See, we, we, I, I don't think we've seen a rom-com in 15 years, At something least, like that. Yeah. So clearly we're not. So you don't need it. that tonight because you have this and we're going to, you're going to, we're going to learn together at the same time. So what could be even better? Like sometimes when you watch a, a rom-com, yeah. it's easy to just fantasize about, oh, like this is what love looks like. This is a relationship. This, this is how it's meant to be, but it's so not the truth. And they just make it that way. So it's an interesting movie and it makes you feel good. But um, it can be that beautiful. It could be more beautiful, but it takes hard work. And there's just some points and things you got to know about <coughs> to help along the way. So what we're going to try to do tonight, the wedding singer, that's excellent. I saw 13 going on 30, a lot of good ones. Okay. How um, to lose a guy in 10 days. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, so what we're going to um, kind of, the way I think we're going to have this work tonight essentially is for one, just, just in an effort to provide uh, some sort of relief, uh, and just the onslaught of, of bad news that we keep that we keep seeing, you know, on, on you know the internet, you know, uh, Twitter, whatever it is. It's just a lot of uh, scary things we're seeing. We're just trying to provide a little, for one, little uh, rom com, little entertainment, and then we're hoping to get a little bit deeper and give over some basic principles in relationships, and uh, you know, relationships certainly, and how do you know when you know? So that's uh, uh, th these are the things that we're going to be looking at tonight. So, excellent. Okay. So I think without further ado, um, we should probably uh, just jump right in. Okay. Yeah. So, it all kind of started. Uh, a little backstory here is when I was in ninth grade, a friend of mine, a good buddy of mine, Ellie Calm, is probably not watching. I don't believe he has Facebook, but uh, he invited me because his, his pops was the head of NCSY in Denver. And he, uh, I'm sorry, you might hear my kids screaming at each other, our okay. kids. They're fine. Uh, they're okay. Yeah, it's okay. We're used to this. It's normal. Uh, <coughs> it's normal. Yes. So. Speaking of fairy tales. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, essentially, in ninth grade, my, I, I was given the opportunity to travel to this NCSY program, great program called Yarche Kala, which took place in New York. And, you know, it's, uh, as a Denver boy, I'd never been east. I was 16 years old, I think, ish. I've never been east of Chicago, and I was very excited to get to the big city. Yeah, it was very exciting for me. They didn't tell us it was actually like a gross town in New Jersey. I think it was called East Windsor, New Jersey, where it smells like everywhere else smells in New Jersey, <laughs> uh, which is not so pleasant. Um, and they didn't like tell us that part. They just told us we're going to New York because we went to Flatbush, uh, Brooklyn uh, one day. So that counted one as uh, one morning, and that counted as New York, and that was great. Needless to say, though, it was a tremendous experience. Um, it was a very spiritual experience for me. And it, uh, for the first time in my life, I started thinking about Judaism. I started thinking about what it meant to be Jewish. I thought it, started thinking about uh, God and, and the fact that God gave us the Torah. And it was like super, super inspiring. The Shabbos was very inspiring. There was a Jewish singer named Shlomi Dax who came and he performed all of Shabbos and uh, beautiful, you know, concerts and, and singing and, and davening. And I was so inspired that basically after this all happened, I realized like, you know what, like, I really find this whole Judaism thing very, very beautiful. Uh, I, I, intellectually, it makes tons of sense. Um, uh, just a way of life and the idea of um, having that Shabbos experience as part of my life, it was very beautiful for me. And I decided to go on a journey essentially to begin incorporating various aspects of Judaism in my life. For me, it was a very long journey. The first year I worked on just doing Shabbos. Um, six months after all of this, I was playing uh, baseball at George Washington High School. I was a star catcher. And uh, it was the first game actually of the, uh, of, it, was the, it was the first game of the summer season on a Shabbos. I wasn't sure if I would play or not. And in about the third inning, the guy from right field throws it to me. I tagged the guy out. 
the ump is like, show me the ball. So I show him the ball. He's like, you're out of there. I like chest bumped, you know, the, the guy who tried to like slide in. It was very exciting. And, and after that, you know, the next pitch ball comes in my glove and just pops out. That was it. Uh, I'm like, time blue. Uh, throw the ball back, pull off my glove, and my thumb is like turning purple. So I realized at that point, it was like, um, that never happened to me before. I went to the hospital, Rose Hospital, and I uh, turned out I fractured my thumb and I would now be sidelined for the rest of the 30 game summer baseball season. And I took this, you know, that, as a little just note that maybe for me at my point in my journey, like now it would be appropriate. Now is the time to, you know, actually, you know, go all in, you know, on, on keeping, uh, keeping the Sabbath. So, so that was, um, that was kind of, um, uh, all the results of this Yarkhe call. I went on a little digression here. Uh, the next year I went, um, I got so inspired that I came back as a 10th grader. I came back and I had my last Chipotle, which uh, was very, oh. very traumatic for me. Like the um, I think it was right after that. Okay. Yes, yeah, I, I did everything like January 1st. That's when I started new things. So December 31st was the last Chipotle. Um, I used to dress up as a burrito on Halloween and Thanksgiving and they gave us free Chipotle. And I stopped all of that December 31st, 2005, uh, 2002 or three-ish. Anyway, that takes me now to my 10th, 11th grade year. And that's where the story begins. That's where the story begins. <laughs> so honestly, I don't know really why I went. I just had a good time. I felt like I was where I needed to be religiously at that point. And I just wanted to go just uh, for the awesome experience. To go then. Yes. Even though you knew now that it was in New Jersey. <laughs> yes. Even though now I knew it was in New Jersey, there was no fooling me. I still decided to go, and that was the best decision of my life. Can you tell us kind of what brought yeah. you to that? Um, so I started going on NCSY, which is like youth group, in um, middle school, actually. My best friend, who I invited to come on, but she's on the East Coast, so she couldn't come watch us, but um, she started going away to sleepaway camp. We actually met at day camp, and when she was going away to sleepaway camp, to Camp Stone in Pennsylvania, um the only thing she talked about the whole year after that ever was camp i knew all her camp friends i knew everything about them um and so real quick can you guys hear can you guys hear the kumsits my kids are having in the bedroom oh, the uh, singing. can you guys hear that or like you're good can you hear the, hear the kumsits i can you hear the kumsits or you don't hear the kumsits you hear it yeah it's so cute though it is cute <laughs> it's cute. background music background, it's fine. okay okay it's fine. At least they're not crying okay maybe i'll tell them it's fine. So, okay, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay. So she always talked about her camp friends. And then we were old enough in seventh grade to go on NCSY Shabbatones, which was like a whole weekend away. Sometimes it was local, sometimes in another city nearby. And I got to meet a lot of her camp friends. So I was really excited to go. And I started going. And I became close with a lot of, a lot of people there. It was really great. So... Then comes our, we were like junior NCSY and middle schoolers. We graduate to high school and high school senior NCSY. And it's so I beautiful. I want to start singing with them. Uh, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> um, uh, all these Jewish awesome singers uh, recently started doing concerts on Zoom. So the, the last two weeks, this guy Simcha Liner is great. You should look him up. He's phenomenal. He's on Instagram. He does these live concerts. And my kids are just like rocking out to Rachel and Mavaka Albanel. Uh, where they're talking about how Rachel weeps for her children when they're in pain. And right now, actually, our, you know, we are in pain. Humanity's in pain. And they're, they're invoking that. It's beautiful. But it's, uh, it's just a little distracting. So I'm going to just ask them to, to just quiet down a little bit. close the doors? I'll close the doors. Okay. okay. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> um, so, okay, so it's high school. And I'm going. My friends are there. And then there's the opportunity to go on this program called the Arche Kala, which is exclusively, basically, for public school students, which I was in high school. And... Um, to travel to New York for a week-long thing over winter break. Great, what could be better? I had no other plans. So I went with, um, not with my best friend, but with two of my other friends who became also best friends, twins. Actually, that comes up in the story later. And um, I went with them on this program. So I was in 10th grade at this time, at this point, by the time we went. And until now, everything that I did Jewishly, like, it was fun and exciting and I loved it. They were my closest friends more than in school. Um, but like, I didn't realize that there was more to it than the social aspect. Like I just loved it. Um, it was fun. It was a good time. And so this experience of going to this program where you had, what was it? Maybe 500 public school students from all over the country at that time. Now I think it's an international program. 
um, come together. And they brought in like big speakers, like Rav Zev Lef came in, who I quote to some of you sometimes, and different speakers. And they teach us about Judaism. And it was just, that was the first time that it really woke me up. Like there's more to it than just this fun social aspect. Um, and that's where we met at this yeah, program. So, so how do we meet, right? So I remember it's the first day in East Windsor, New Jersey, and Sarah's like sitting over there on that side of the machitza. And there's a, there's a machitza because when we dive in and when we pray, it's helpful to uh, just be kind of, you know, focused on, on the prayer at hand and not, at, you know, the, the person over there um, who <laughs> could be. You can't see God. So if you're going to focus on God, it's hard when someone's sitting next to you that you can see that you really want to talk to. You want to see. In that type of way. So, um, so anyway, so this is before the, all the davening, right? And before they're praying and uh it's, it's like right when they're opening up so i think you know it was like fair game to kind of look over part? i think so do you or it's just this is like my part of story i just oh. wonder if you like actually of course remember i remember this <laughs> that's kidding. where i first saw you so i looked you look at, i saw you <laughs> so i looked over <laughs> the machitza and i don't condone doing this again when you're davening uh, just like if it's a class or whatever but it was right? just intro it was an intro it was a class we and we didn't know better it wasn't like that okay so <laughs> I looked over the machitza and I thought to myself, wow, there's, a, there's an interesting looking person over there. I love uh, how you always say interesting looking. Okay. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I think she, maybe she should be my wife. Um, or, but that's probably not going to happen because I am not going to go talk to her. That would be, that'd be a scary thing to do. That'd be very scary to go ahead and talk to her. And what so, are you thinking? Okay. So I was obviously on the other side of the machitza, and I was sitting with my friends, the twins. Actually, I was sitting with one of my friends, one twin, and we were looking over the machitza because we just got to this big event, tons of Jewish teenagers, and we were Jewish teenagers. Remember, I was in public school at the time, and we were like, hey, I wonder if there's any cute guys here. You know, there's probably about 250 guys our age, so maybe one of them is cute. Um, so we were looking over. And um, I, I spotted Danny across the machitza. I, I think I remember you wearing that red, <laughs> this shirt, it just makes me laugh. Um, the red American Eagle shirt, long sleeve shirt with the stripes, stylish. which we yeah. have since gotten rid of. <laughs> but, I think that's um, a stylish right? that At was, the time, I'm sure very it was. Stylish, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I said to my friend, Annie, I found one, I found one, he's over there. And I showed her. And um, simultaneously then, after the session was over, I went to go tell um, the other sister. I said, um, I went to go tell her, like she was sitting with someone else and she was meeting new people actually. And um, turns out we wanted to meet who she was sitting with. Her name was Jessie Wolf. That's my Danny's sister. Danny's sister. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so well, you started talking to Jesse, I think. Yeah, so then we became friends with Jesse, and we would all hang out. We'd sit together at meals. We'd hang out at nights in the hotels, one big hotel in the hotel room. But the first time I think we ever spoke was, um, you know, again, because I, I wasn't really planning on, on <laughs> speaking to her. Um, I just didn't know what to say. I went to a school for any of you fellow uh, Ramah alumni out there watching with us. I know Ricky is in the house. I, I saw Shira. Michaela, um, y'all know, you know, in our classes, there were maybe, you know, 10, 15, 20 people. Um, and I don't think I ever spoke to anyone from public school before. Uh, I wasn't going to speak to uh, to Sarah necessarily. Uh, but uh, what happened was that I'm a vegetarian. Wait, can I just yeah, add something? Yeah, so when we had meals on this program, it's one big, what's it called, social hall? Simcha room, whatever you want to call it, in the hotel is one big room, and um, there's lots of round tables, and then they have buffet around the sides. So I would sit with my friends at one table, and Jesse, and then Danny and Jesse were siblings, so Danny and some of his friends would sit at our table too. So we'd be sitting together at this round table, um, but we weren't necessarily all talking to each other because, like. I didn't know if I could talk to him and Jesse was there and like, <coughs> like she's my friend, but like he's cute, but how does this work? So that brings us to the pickle story. Oh, okay. So, whew, so I'm a vegetarian. Wait, and, wait can you tell me yeah, yeah. 
who knows the pickle story? Who's heard the pickle story? <laughs> Hands? No? Oh my gosh. There's Rose, someone here Rose who doesn't it. know the pickle story. Okay. If at least one person doesn't know, it's <laughs> worth it. Okay. So this is what happened. Um, it was a barbecue night and it was a days before they were sensitive in the world to vegans or vegetarians or gluten-free people. Back in like 2003. Uh, they, they just assumed back in 03 that like you were just eating meat and if not, it just kind of stunk to be you. Uh, no, everyone ate meat. Because everyone ate meat except Supposedly. me. And me. Obviously. Uh, but I didn't know that yet. So <laughs> what happened was as follows. I go up uh, to the buffet table and I'm a big guy. I, I you know, as the captain of our basketball and baseball teams, um, I would be all of our teams at our school at the time. And uh, I would eat a lot naturally. And, you know, I looked around um, and all there was, you could get like a bun and you could fill it up with a burger and pickles. Uh, so I don't eat <laughs> burgers, ketchup. ketchup. So I put some ketchup in there. And I, I do happen to really enjoy a good pickle every now and then. Um, and I looked around just because it's kind of awkward because I was about to uh, place 15 to 20 pickles on my, <laughs> on my plate. I see his watching. Right. So I was looking around, no one was there. Uh, so I just start, you know, dumping them on my plate. One pickle after the next pickle after the next pickle. And suddenly. <laughs> Wait, so <laughs> for the suspense, okay. yeah. this is like the epic burger night. Like when they had burger night, it was like meat, tons and tons of meat. So actually I remember one of our counselors, our madrich, um was sitting at were we sitting at this table yeah we were. <laughs> and he was collecting was it wings i think he made a fire at the table yeah he made started. like he yeah. um made a pile and started a bonfire in the middle with all the the wings yeah. the bones yeah, yeah. i don't know it enough about it Super but gross. um so clearly i was ready to to <laughs> to get up um it was great it was exciting but um and look for something else to eat excellent so yeah. So after I have now gathered all of my pickles, and I didn't know that was going on. Hello, I'm <laughs> frying. Good to see you. So uh, I didn't know, I didn't know that um, that she did that. I, that. I didn't know she was getting up. I didn't know anyone was coming. I just thought it was me and the pickles in the table. I wonder if now that you're saying it, I wonder if I did it on purpose. Like, were we sitting at the same table? Because I don't recall that part. Maybe but... we weren't sitting at the same table. Maybe I saw you, and then I specifically went. I don't know. Could be. Who knows? Okay. It's all in our memories now. Anyways, so what I'm trying to say is that <laughs> I just plopped all them pickles on the table, uh, the, on my plate, and I hear this little voice, and, she, and the voice goes, you like pickles, don't you? And I didn't see where the voice came from. I just knew it was from behind me. So I turned around, and I saw the interesting looking person uh, who I noticed earlier, who befriended my sister, and there's a lady sitting next to me right now. It was her. She was the one. She said, you like pickles, don't you? And I'm like, okay, wow, okay. I wasn't planning on speaking to her, <laughs> but this is my shot. This is my one opportunity to seize everything you ever wanted. Would you capture it or let it slip? Split. Yo, his palms are sweaty, <laughs> knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on his sweat already. Mom's spaghetti, mom's spaghetti, mom's spaghetti, mom's spaghetti. But on the surface, he looks calm and ready to drop bombs. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so you're choking out, but everything's broken down. The clocks are our time's up, over, but stop back to reality. Okay, go. Can I just like point Whew. something out? Yeah. The last time you actually probably listened to that was also about what? 10, 15 years ago. That is very impressive. That's what we ran out to with the Ramah Tigers. Uh, <laughs> Yes, Mom's Spaghetti, thank you. Okay, so <laughs> love Mom's so, Spaghetti. So literally that song um, of Eminem, Marshall Mathers is blasting in my head. Uh, okay, this is your shot, Danny, this is your shot. Okay, and don't forget, like, this is real time. So basically the way that this looked would be like, you like pickles, don't you? And I'm like. <laughs> the song's playing. And it's like this horribly awkward pause, probably 10 seconds long. At and that I'll, point, I wasn't sure, like, it maybe he doesn't want to talk to me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this is my chance. It's like, this is my one chance. And I'm like, pickles. <laughs> pickles. <laughs> and that's what I said. That's and it. That's it. Here we are. Uh, the story's over now. Um, yeah, so that is what I said. That was our first uh, actual dialogue. Thank you, Adam. Uh, smooth. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, that was our first time we ever spoke. Actually, I didn't think of this before, but sometimes in my dating coaching, 
Um, also my matchmaking, I like to set people up and I also like to talk to people about dates that they go on and help coach them through it. So if you go out with someone and that first date is like, you're really not interested in most cases, it's worthwhile to go out again. Are you saying that you were not interested after that? No, but I'm saying I could have not been interested or you could have not been interested. Okay, like based on that first conversation, like who knows? It didn't, it didn't right? go as it I hoped, have I had to, So right. the point is that like- You those, gave me another chance. Right, those first interactions with someone can be really awkward and it could be hard to, to let out your personality. Like I clearly didn't know you then, like I know you now. And um, yeah. yeah, go out again. Yeah. And- um, and give a person, you know, a second chance because uh, I'll just tell you um, <laughs> what happened. So uh, the rest of that trip, basically, um, and there's more to the story, so we got to keep keep rolling our ahead. But um, we did start talking after that, and you know, it seemed like we did really connect uh, very nicely. Um, and I remember the night before they were leaving, there were this special, you know, Central East region. They had to on their special party bus, uh, <laughs> coach, bus. Uh, coach bus, and. And they, they had to leave early. So she told me, she said, you know, it'd be really nice if she woke up early um, and said bye as, as, as my group is leaving. That'd be so nice. And I thought to myself, wow, that's so nice she said that. Maybe, maybe she, maybe there's something there. Maybe she likes me. I don't know. But I'm like, but what if she told that to everyone she, she spoke to? Like so many people were trying to talk to her and stuff. And maybe she just told that to everyone. And I'll just show up there, say bye. And there's a whole crew of like, of like dudes, you know, it's like, uh, well, like uh, like Bachelor, Average Joe. The Average Joe was a show back then. There all these like average guys competing for this, you know, lady, um, and um, and uh, uh, just competing for this uh, something else. Uh, okay. uh, competing for uh, you know this beautiful woman, and um, all these average guys were, were trying. And I'm like, well, I'm the average guy. Then at the end of that, the show, Average Joe, they brought in all these like uh, buff like stub guys, and they always won. And I was like, what if that's going to happen? Uh, so what happened was, is I, I, I cringed even you know, like say this, but I woke up like a good boy at six o'clock in the morning. I, I sat up and I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, now's my chance. I'm going to go say bye. I'm like, no, she's probably, you know, she told everyone else this. She shouldn't do it. And I'm like, what are you doing? Stop. And I went back to sleep. Okay. So that calls for chance number two, right? So maybe you should give it even more than two days. There you go. Um, and I did go back to sleep. Um, and I will say actually that this mirrors a line, and I, I've said this before around Rosh Hashanah time. Um, we do say in, in Chodesh Elul before Rosh Hashanah, uh, we invoke um, this pasuk, this verse from Shira Shirim, the Song of Songs, where it describes this relationship between God and the Jewish people, and which described as Kol Dodi Doi uh, Fake. The, the voice of my beloved is knocking, Peace be Lee, uh, open it up for me, Achosi Rayasi, Yonasi, open it up, my beloved. And then what does the Jewish people say? Like, sorry, I'm not opening it up, God. I already put on my jam jams. I'm not opening it up. I don't want to get my, my feet all dirty. So that's kind of how I felt. Um, it, it was just like, sorry, already in my jammies. I'm not going to open up, even though you're knocking and wanting to connect. And uh, it, it was bad. Uh, so we uh, need to open up for, um, you know, uh, for spirituality, uh, feel that connection, allow it in, and uh, do not uh, go back to sleep. Okay, anyway, so... After this, um, this was a very you know, intense five days where uh, I just met this remarkable person. Uh, didn't quite know how I did. It didn't seem like I did that great. Uh, but, As if it's a TV show. Yes. <laughs> but what we started doing, you know, again, we were never going to talk on the phone. Um, I just didn't do that. There was no texting back then. No dumb phones, uh, if a phone at all. Um, but we did email. Uh, we did a lot of emailing. And the way that this worked basically is one of us would send an email to the other. This is what Sarah recently printed, uh, or she always, she printed it immediately. And we just recently rediscovered it. These classified documents that until now have been classified. Now we're declassifying some of them. Anyway, so what I'm saying is that um, we started corresponding via email. She was dudet1302 at yahoo.com. I, naturally, was <laughs> buffmandan10 at aol.com. Okay, uh, remember that little detail because that's gonna, that's gonna be important later. What were your story. screen names, guys? Did you have screen names? For any of you uh, who's not you know, quite you know, such a millennial, you have screen names, we're feel free. No? All right, we're like borderline, uh, not so much. Okay, but feel free. Oh, okay, yeah, y'all are saw, okay. Animal, okay, good. Oh, I like this, okay, cool. Swallow girl, okay. <laughs> feel free to post your screen name, soccer girl. 
A lot of, okay, cool. A lot of cool names out if there. If only we could still do that, right? Uh, Shasha, oh, I like it. Okay, cool. Okay, y'all did have screen names. That's good. Okay, fine. Anyways, so we started corresponding via email. The way it worked basically okay, is Nazi. that, hey, Nati, how are you? Okay. <laughs> Like part um, of the story. Yes, he is a part of the story for sure. Anyway, so um, so what happened was that I I went ahead and I would email her. Um, I would email her uh, and I would anxiously await. Uh, I'd go to my computer every day after school. It was before smartphones, before email to your phone, all of that. You'd have to log into your AOL. If you had okay. it, uh... you got mail. And I did have an AOL. So. Anyways, so what, um, what I did was I would check anxiously every day, just awaiting that one email from dudet1302 at, at yahoo.com. Most of the days it didn't come, but er inevitably it did come, okay? She did respond. Um, why did it take so long to respond to my email so long? I don't know, I was a three-sport athlete. <laughs> Okay, she's busy. She's just, uh, also, just in, like, the, in the band in school. Today you leave it on your computer, right? And it's just always online. But back then you had to turn it's it true. on, it's wait true. it to boot up. It's true. So, okay. so basically what happened is, let's say it's like nine days later. That was the average. No, nine days? It was about nine days. Three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whatever it was, <laughs> um, as soon as I got the email, my heart went pitter-patter, pitter-patter, pitter-patter. And I wanted to respond right away. I was so excited. Um, but I didn't. I didn't. I waited the exact number of days <laughs> that she took to write to me because I did not want to give away my tremendous uh, love for her. I didn't want her to know about that at that stage of the uh, of the career. So, um, so we went ahead and uh, we corresponded via email for about three months ish um, until we were able to see each other again. Um, we had back in the day uh, these NCSY ski shabatones in Winter Park. We would. We would actually go um, snow tubing Saturday night. We would go skiing on. Um, we would go ahead and go skiing on uh, Sunday, um, and Sarah remarkably was able to come uh, to that Shabbaton. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, and uh, essentially, what happened was Sarah was able to come in for that. That was kind of like a, a game changer for us. That was a big deal, but. I was in what tenth grade at that time. Was it tenth grade? Yeah. It must have been. I was. You were in eleventh grade. Yes. Yeah. And um, I said to my mom after Echikala, I want to go on the ski shabaton. Um, you know, I met this boy, and um, she wasn't so excited about sending me all the way across the country to Denver. And her mom's not the type that would want to do that necessarily, right? <laughs> no. Right. Um. So. She actually recalls this and tells me, I said to her, to convince her, I said, mom, my future depends on it. And then she's like, whoa. And she knew he was vegetarian too. So between those two things, um, she said, okay, find someone to go with you, to travel with you, and you can go. So thankfully with God's grace, um, there was a national board member who was interested in coming. My friend's sister's friend, and um, we traveled together to Denver. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember uh, Sarah stayed <coughs> stayed at our crib, and my sister uh, Jessie. I don't. Uh, she maybe will watch the recording. Thank you, Jess. Uh, she was good <laughs> friends with her, as we already established, and um, and instantly kind of whisked her away uh, to hang out. And we didn't get to really uh, talk so much. I um, remember we were just <laughs> in her room, closed the door. <laughs> that was it. That was it. Um, yeah. The next morning, I took her to a very important place in my life, which is the Walmart. Um, it was brand new at the time, the Super Walmart down by Hampton in Yosemite. Uh, I went there every, almost every Saturday night with my BFF Ian and &E, uh, who I'm sure is not watching because he doesn't have Facebook, Adam. Um, but we went there um, and we, uh, they used to make these things called uh, a, a fart machine. Um, and I would have it in my, uh, he would have it in his pocket. And he'd go ask someone where the restroom was, and I would press the button like from far away, uh, and I'd like burst out laughing. And he just asked where the restroom was. This is what we did every uh, every Saturday night um, in my high school, and I wanted Sarah to see it, uh, to to see to be there, for, you know, to see that, to experience that. It was technically maybe kind of our first date um, was in that Walmart, a very special place. You go see it even today. Sometimes we do that on our anniversaries. We just go over there um, to commemorate the uh, the special. Uh, <laughs> Okay, um, that, I think the night after that, I, um, I believe, or maybe it was even the night, one of the nights, uh, I forgot which, we went to my buddy's house. That um, was the first night right from the airport. Oh, from the airport, went to his house, we had some pizza, 
at his mama's house. And uh, apparently he, I don't remember this, but he planted that machine, the afferment, that, that previously mentioned machine under my chair. And when I sat down next to Sarah, he pressed it. And uh, I think that you, you reacted pretty good. You kinda... The truth is, I think I remember it, but I think I also pretended I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't like, even remember Like, what do you it. do? Those things are so yeah, awkward. it was really awkward. Um, <laughs> anyway, so um, essentially, um, just to fast forward a little bit, um, we, we go up, you know, on this Shabbaton, this beautiful Shabbaton, and we have a very special Shabbos. The Friday night, <coughs> I think, stands out in both of our minds. Um, you know, after kind of people are hanging out in the main lounge, and I believe... This is advice. This coming. Is advice coming, okay. Yeah. You'll drop the advice, because I don't know if I have... Okay. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, I can't, I'm not sure what you're referring to. But, um, so we're just kind of chilling out Friday night. Well, Shabbos is beautiful. You're able to do this. You can really connect, but uh, we're just pounding uh, Mrs. Combs' uh, potato chomp. So good. It's yeah. amazing. Just it's called potato chomp. I don't know how you make. I never. It's just the make it. No, it was like potato. It was like all potatoes. Okay, anyway, that's fair. we were just yeah. like pounding it, um, and I don't think we even noticed. Like a, a lot of people dipped out. You know, it was like getting late, and, and we were just kind of talking. <laughs> it was like, like after dinner, everyone was chilling, hanging out, and so were we. So were we, and then little did we know, like everyone kind of like what? Dwindled away. Dwindled away, um, and hours pass, and we're just talking about everything. Right, we're talking about. Our growth. We're both on a similar spiritual trajectory. We're talking about our, you know, our lives and what's important to us and what we see ourselves like. We're getting pretty deep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what it, what we want our futures to look like, and yeah. So that's the advice part. Is that a lot of times we're scared to bring up these topics right away. And I'm not saying it's a first date type of thing when you meet someone, but like pretty soon because why waste your time? Like if it didn't align, then it would be very clear that this did not need to keep going, but we saw ourselves in the same direction, going in that same direction. And um, it's important to establish that before we get too emotionally involved in a relationship. Yeah, beautiful. And yeah, I know for me, like at that point, like any doubts I ever had, and I actually didn't have any doubts. I mean, it, it always kind of seemed too good to be true, but I was like, like if she's ever down, like we're getting married. I just need to work up the guts to, uh, figure out if she is down and, and put myself out there like that. Um, it was like clear. Uh, I get back to my room. I didn't tell anyone. I, I never would tell anyone any of this. Um, and my BFF, my roommate, uh, he was sitting there cross-legged, um, <laughs> waiting, sitting upright with a book in his hands. And he looks at me and says, Danny, where were you? I was worried sick about you. I was like, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, and that was that. Uh, we then read Hasidic stories, him and I. And, uh, Did he say, you were talking to Cyril, didn't you? Uh, I think, Wait, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah, he, he knew. He was on to me. I guess maybe he saw before he left. Or he was on to me pretty quickly. Um, you know, BFFs sometimes know uh, their, their BFF and, and what's going on more than they do even. I, I knew what was going on, but I didn't want to tell anyone. I appreciate that even more now, knowing you so much better. You're not a night person. No. But like no. that night, I just, I couldn't tell. Exactly. I usually, I'm sleeping by now. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, and I'm not a night person, but for her in that moment, I was. Um, okay, the, it was the next day actually. Um, it was, I think it was snowing. And somehow we just got to toss some, some snow around. And we had like an epic uh, kind of like snow fight. Um, and, uh, I don't think we realized, I mean, it, it was all very sweet and we were just tossing snow at each other, but, um, but we were just like chucking snow at each other. And then people dwindled away. People dwindled again. away. And I later found out like everybody was watching. Uh, <laughs> but, but in the moment it was, um, in, in the moment it was, it, it, it was like, we had no idea that was happening that anyone was noticing just were tossing snow at each other. Kind of felt like that scene from Lion King with Simba and Nala are just like frolicking and in the background they're like can you feel the love it was like magical um and, and i don't even recall you know much else other than just like blissfully prancing through the snow like tossing snow at you um, and then eventually seeing everyone pressed against the glass door like oh everyone saw that snow fight <laughs> that's uh i mean again it was, we're just chucking snow at each other but um but yeah it, was, it seemed like people were we're on to you know the uh, the connection that was being built. 
Um, okay. So as we uh, move on in the uh, in this epic rom-com over here, um, basically what happened was, um, you know, she, um, actually the next morning, um, and I believe Nati was tuning in. I don't know if he's still with us. I believe he was maybe taking lessons even with us. We were taking snowboarding lessons uh, with my buddy Nati, uh, who was watching on Facebook. I don't know if he's still with us, Nati. Uh, and I believe Ari uh, from, from school. There's a whole crew of us taking and Matt, I believe, Matt Ropar was, uh, was with us also uh, taking snowboarding lessons. I'm a skier. I don't really care for snowboarding. Um, if you are a snowboarder, um, you know, I've, I got over it. I used to have a thing against snowboarders. Uh, I think one, one time like a snowboarder like uh, ran over my sister um, and it was a little bit salty. But now, oh, there he is. Okay, yes, thank you. Now he remembers it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so basically what happened was um, uh, that after a, a day of like snowboarding, I'm like, dude, I could like ski, you know, with blindfolded, you know, down a black, you know, backwards. Like, I'm gonna go and try a, a green on the snowboard. Like that, uh, greens are nothing. Um, so we took the the, the, the the chairlift up and we attempted to start snowboarding down the mountain. It was at Winter Park. Um, needless to say, shortly after we realized that was horribly dangerous. I had no idea what we were doing. And we had a little dilemma because Sarah had a flight to catch. She had to get down the mountain in like 10 minutes and hop yeah, on. Actually. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I forgot. And, uh, and I had to catch a bus back to DIA. Oh, so we're like, okay, we got to figure this out. So we started sledding down the snowboard, or like on the snowboard. We used it as a sled. And we started just, you know, bolting down the mountain. It was the best sledding ever. It was uh, fantastic until we got pulled over by the snowmobile guy. Uh, or, or girl, I should say, it was a snowmobile girl. She pulled us over, um, and um, okay, is my okay? Looks like uh, we got disconnected on Facebook. Maybe okay, we're good. Um, so we got pulled over on on the snowmobile, and they're like, "Yo, you can't like sled on a, on this mountain. Like, you got to board. Like, we don't know how. Like, she has a flight to catch. Like, what do you want from us? Like, oh, okay, come with us." So we split into two Z's. I believe it was maybe Nati and Matt on one snowmobile and uh, Sarah and I on the other one. Um, and that, I guess, was our second date after Walmart. Um, it was a lovely snowmobile ride down Winter Park Mountain to get her effectively to her flight. Um, and that was, that was very fun. Uh, after this, um, you know, she was in Cleveland. I was in Denver. I don't even think back then you could even call like for free to other states. I don't remember. Not that, not that I was prepared even to call her. Uh, I wasn't, um, but we started the email thing again. We just kept emailing, um, just kept emailing uh, like we were before uh, for the next bunch of months. And that takes us about nine months later. Do we skip this? Oh, no, this isn't yet. No, no, no this okay. isn't coming up. Okay, okay. Uh, this takes us nine months later. That was in March, okay? That was in March. Um, fast forward nine months to the next year, Kala, my senior year. Sarah's 11th grade year, her son, Yarekala, and I get an email, because that's all we did. She said, oh, here's my number. Why don't you call me when you come so I know you're, you're going to be here? And you have to remember, at this point, I had never called, like, a person of the opposite gender ever, um, and I figured if I would call her, she'd be on to me that I would like to marry her, and I just wasn't um, emotionally prepared to reveal that to her yet by calling her, so I didn't call her. I know, I know, not good. But anyway, so we saw each other. I'm like, oh, sorry, I kind of lost your number, you know, whatever. You know. I think you kind of. Yeah. Um, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, sorry, sorry on Facebook. Facebook. Okay. okay. Uh, anyway, so needless to say, um, we, we kind of pick up where we left off, uh, you know, that connection that we had. Um, I believe we even did actually chat via uh, hotel phone, um, you know, every evening. So we did get to uh, get that experience of just talking on the phone in the flesh. Um, and, and we had a tremendous, you know, meaningful kind of time just deepening that, um, that connection um, and clarifying again that we were heading in the same direction. And it, it was just very uh, powerful, you know, the connection that, uh, that we built up. Yeah, especially all the times that we could see each other. I mean, it was always long distance, so we didn't see each other a lot. But we were corresponding via email and definitely sharing our days <coughs> and our feelings about things. and. Um, there's a lot of communication going on. And then also when we did see each other, it was on the ski Shabbaton or it was on this Yerche Kala, this learning program. And so it was always in an environment um, that was growth focused. And I really think that also built a foundation. Like 
we were both there going to classes and learning really interesting things and we talk about it together and I think that's really um an amazing thing to have the opportunity to do you know with that other person that if you ever do have the opportunity to be learning together whether it's together or at the same time and then you both come together and talk about it and see how it fits into your future life and um, build on that together yeah. yeah definitely felt like we're building towards something we're building ourselves up towards something big and um and actually when we left um so we got little notes that I, we recently uncovered i'm going to share some of them with you um sarah's bff uh, uh simone um she sarah was so excited to bring her so she could meet me so this is what she wrote <laughs> and i'm now quoting danny you're an awesome person i knew we'd be friends from the beginning if it wasn't for sarah we never would have met just get married already just kidding <laughs> And that, that was hard to see. She was just kidding. But when I saw she said she'd get married already, that I was like, wow, maybe, maybe, maybe she does. She also wants to get married, maybe. I don't know. Um, and then Sarah wrote me um, another little letter here. It was very nice, uh, very nice handwriting. Um, and she said, we better keep up our emails. Stay in touch. Um, I have the best time with you. Uh, I'm so glad we finally got to see each other. It was so long. Uh, I always look forward to checking my email just in case I got a message from you. And I'm usually falling off my chair laughing because they're so funny. You have my number, so seriously call me anytime, underline. You are such an inspiration, you will not even believe it. And then she colored for me and she wrote, love always, Sarah. I was like, wow, she said love always. Maybe, maybe that means, uh, 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 maybe <laughs> that's uh, the other side of just other uh, notes, whatever, that, that people left. Um, so... I was like, wow, maybe, maybe she does like this. Maybe she is into this also, like I am. Um, but I can never tell her or anyone else. Anyway, I never told a soul how I felt, um, even though looking back, it might have been obvious. Um, and even later, uh, when we were reminiscing, um, after we, we realized everything, and we'll get to that. This is um, primary source number three. Yes, this is a, a, a conversation from um, Duda 1302 and Buffman Van Ten on AOL. So, I'm reading here, uh, and this again, I'm skipping, I'm skipping uh, a little bit, essentially. I'm skipping some of the story, and, and I'll tell you how we got here, but it's relevant. During this time period, um, after all of this, so I would spend every Shabbos afternoon with my BFF, Ian, 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 on his parents' hammock in his backyard. And I, I told Sarah- We used to spend Shabbos afternoon on the trampoline, me and my best friend. Oh, there it is, wow. Whoa. So I told her later after I revealed everything, and we'll get to that. But I, I did tell her later, I said, when I was laying on the hammock, and it was this time when this happened, when I was laying on the hammock with my friend, before he knew how I felt about you, he said, quote, and now I'm literally quoting myself. I love quoting myself. <laughs> he, he said, actually, no, I'm quoting Adam. I'm <laughs> quoting myself, quoting Adam. I'm sorry. He says, quote, the way you just gazed into my eyes was how you gaze into your beshert, that means your intended one, your beshert Surla's eyes, end quote. And I wrote, Heh -heh. it was so funny, but so exciting that he saw we had something special. Okay. Um, so he called it. So he called it, he was on to it. Um, he was, he was like a prophet. Until this day, he, 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 he gloats about the prophecy uh, that he, he called and, uh, fulfilled, and has been fulfilled. Okay. Anyway, now we're getting uh, to, to kind of where, where stuff uh, went down. Um, it's now getting into the spring. We're now in about this time of year, honestly. Um, might even be to the date. Uh, we can actually... At nine oh, okay. Got to get moving. Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, if anyone wants to just uh, Google at home, um, look up the old avalanche uh, schedule uh, in the year 2004 and see when they played the Detroit Red Wings in March. That'd be crazy if it was today. Uh, but it was in March that this happened um, when they played the Red Wings, when the Avs played the Red Wings. Okay, so anyone wants to Google and you can just tell me. <clears throat> okay, so she can check. Awesome, so you can uh, just send us a message when that happened. Anyway, so I'm like, listen, I'm going to. Um, uh, very nice, Charlie. I think we won that game. It was very exciting. Anyway, so the. Uh, what year? This is in 2004. Now, that's 16 years ago. So I realized March 25th and 27th, today's the 24th, Ugh, one day off. April 1st, no? April 1st, 
know. Uh, Adam seems to maybe think. Maybe that's I don't when know. it was posted. Maybe that was posted then. Okay. Fine. Anyway, so we're about one day off. That's I like that. That's cray cray. That's cool. That's a beautiful dog right there. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Rachel's rocking uh, the nice dog background. Anyway, so. <clears throat> Uh, this is the best part. Okay, gotta, okay, okay. So I'm like, listen, I'm going off to school. Sometimes what happens is people find their intended ones in school, in college. That can happen. Um, I need to know before I go to school, before I leave, uh, if, if if this is a mutual uh, feeling uh, that, that she shares as well. Now it's getting serious. Yes, because I've never dreamed of even telling her because uh, it's it just, um, I, I didn't want to put myself out there like that. But I'm like, I have to. So I write this epic long email, which regrettably we were unable to track down. It's, it's vanished. Um, it's gone as before the days of cloud or Gmail is long gone. Anyway, so I, sent, I write this epic email where I basically say, listen, like when I watch the OC, when I watch One Tree Hill, I think of us, okay? <laughs> like I am Ryan and you are, no, no, I'm Seth and you are Summer. How do you remember that? Oh I, know, I think that's right, maybe. Yeah. I am uh, Nathan and you're Peyton. No, I'm Nathan and you're, I don't remember. Okay, OC One Tree Hill, I see us. I was recently at my first ever wedding uh, and I saw us. I saw the, the bride, you know, walking down to the room and I saw us. Um, that's kind of where I'm at, you know. So I'm going off to school now and I need to know, you know, are you Haley and Nathan? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Shira. Thank you, Shira. Uh, I'm like, uh, I need to know, you know, if maybe you you see this um, or not. But before I go to school, I need the clarity uh, to see if if this is something. And if not, um, I need to just get on with it. And and if so, then then that's great. And I want to know that. <laughs> you really put yourself out there. I really did. Yeah. And uh, I sent the email from Buffy and Dantana AOL.com to do it at thirteen oh two at Yahoo Talk about vulnerability. Yes, I, I, I was vulnerable, and. Mm -hmm. I instantly wanted to do something that you can do on AOL. You can unsend emails. But thank God, she was due debt 1302 at who? At yahoo.com, not at AOL.com. So there was no unsending emails. Thank God, there was no unsending emails. So I sent the email. Someone's hiding in the kitchen. Oh, a little hider? I thought that was the, uh, I thought that was the, the urn. Okay. I tried to unsend it. I cannot unsend it. I was bugging out, bugging out, freaking out. What happened? Okay. So what happened was the next day was the most intense day of my life. I was in school. I couldn't think about anything. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm just a shot. When, when did you see that email? Right? As soon as I called you. Oh, that was, that was, okay. It's about like 24 hours later <laughs> when she saw the, the email. Probably because of time difference. As, also. as soon as you saw you called me, you didn't wait. No. Just, okay, fine, fine. And that's okay. Fine. Anyway. So I have a basketball game that evening at Denver Academy <clears throat> and we were winning big, big time um, as we often did. And, you know, sometimes when we play basketball, sometimes people would make the mistake of trying to shoot over me. And when I do that, and my kids learn this today, actually. Uh, um, who's in the kitchen? Um, I'm coming to find you. I'll close my eyes. You can run back to bed. Okay. Yeah. Back See ya. To bed. So, as my son Usher, who's here, can tell you, when he tries to shoot, I often will block it, and I, I go like this, like not in this, like the Kembe Mutombo. I'm like not not in my house, right? Am I right? Yeah, I beat him today and every day, day. Every day, and him and a Rummy <laughs> against me and a Rummy, um, but he's a baller. Okay, he was just dropping threes all day. Okay, good night, my man. I love you. That's um, how you get better, yeah. right? So you gotta lose some to win yes, some. Yes, uh, you gotta teach him. Anyway. Yeah. So this poor guy I'm guarding, he just keeps making the mistake of trying to, to shoot over me. And I'm just like, he shoots it. I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like fired up. I'm like, I'm amped up because everything going on. And every single time this happened, every time the ref called a foul. And like, it was egregious because you heard, you know, that distinct sound of hand slapping ball instead of hand slapping hand. That's what it was. And he called a foul on me every time. And it was, about, it was the vocals that ah, he blocked the sound, <laughs> I guess. So I was like, the fifth time that happened, um, I fouled out. It was two minutes into the third quarter. We were up by about 15. And I was fouled out, like for the second time in my career, I think. 
And I, again, I, I was always a good boy. I was immense. I was nice. I would thank the refs. I would help guys up, et cetera. Um, and I told the ref, I'm like, I just want to let you know, I'm a senior. You know, I've been playing ball, you know, high school level four years. I've been playing in my life probably 10 years right now. And you are by far the worst ref I've ever seen in my whole entire life. And it's not even close. And um, he gave me a technical foul for that remark. Uh, I sat down. As you said. Everyone <laughs> is like, what is going on with Danny? Uh, like, like, this is so unlike him. I look at my pops in the stands. He's like, doesn't know what's happening. Um, <laughs> Only him. And, uh, and later, um, uh, we, uh, he told me that he got tickets to the Avs game. And we went to the Detroit Red Wings game that evening which apparently was maybe tomorrow, you know, 16 years to the day, wow. uh, potentially. Wow. So that means I sent the email, by the way, today, uh, uh, 16 years ago. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Yeah. We didn't plan it. Not we, at all. Okay. Anyway, so, so what happened was um, I was freaking out. So, I, I, yeah. Should I say, like, what happened when I got it? Uh, yeah. Okay, so I got the email, and I read it, and I'm reading it, and I'm reading it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe he just said this. And part of what he said in that email, which is the lost email, right? That we can't find. I remember very distinctly, he said, so if you could let me know how you feel about me, otherwise I'm going to have to get over you. And I was like, oh my gosh, he's going to be getting over me. I have to call him quick before he decides he doesn't like me anymore. And so right then I was so terrified. I was so scared. I remember I was like shaking. I remember sitting on my dad. I picked up my cordless phone. Was it even cordless? No, it probably was not. And <laughs> I called and it was so loud because he's at the hockey game. I'm like, hello? I see this number. It's a 216 number. I'm like, I don't know who that is. And we never spoke on the phone yet. I'm like, who's owner that, sir? Oh my gosh. I'm like, hello? Like, Hi, can you hear me? Hi. I'm like, no, I'm like, no, no. Who is it? Who is this? I, I can't, I can't even hear you. I just got your email. I was like, oh, should I go out and, and go talk to you? Like, should I leave? And you're like, no, it's okay. Call me. Call me after the game. Call me after the game. Now, we forgot uh, Cleveland is two hours ahead of Denver. So, did you not so call me? So, I called you after the game, and it went straight to voicemail. She was sleeping. Was that a cell phone then? But, Maybe. but what happened was I went ahead when I got home. And I opened my email. Oh, because then once we couldn't talk, I had to write back to him. So that email, is this a copy of it? A uh, it's a picture. Okay, long story. We don't have the exact email either that got lost. But what we do have is a note I wrote her, actually, the day we got married, oh, where I quoted quote the email. So I had it back then. I bet those two most important emails, it must be that we took them out at some point for something else. Yeah, they're gone. Anyway, when you take things out, put them away. Put them back. Put them back. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so in this email, uh, it's like now midnight in Denver after the Avs had a resounding victory over the Red Wings, and I'm a nervous wreck. Should I read it? Could I? Because what I wrote, you can read it. Uh, you can read it. You uh, can read it. You can read it. It's fine. Um, the other ones I, I this is another it. lesson oh. about being a boxer about giving in. It's not about who wins. Right. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So I kind of uh, this part. Yeah. Okay. Or, oh, Danny, <laughs> I don't believe in love at first sight. I do, but that is almost what it feels like with you. From the moment I saw you sitting across the mechitza, I picked you up from the crowd and thought, he must be amazing. Yet, I believed you were, in fact, completely off limits. Am I okay? Uh, I, yeah, I'm skipping? Just, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm skipping. <laughs> okay. Um, I never thought I would tell you this, but I'm being completely honest. You know, people ask you about your future or you see a family on TV or something and try to picture yourself. Well, I pictured me, oh, well, I've never pictured me with anyone but you, D-Train. <laughs> that's all we have for that beautiful email. Um, uh, anyways, so uh, after that um, email where it was clear that uh, it was a mutual uh, feeling, um, it was uh, kind of just a matter of, of time, um, you know, until, you know, we'd be able to, uh, to get married. Like for me, it was never a doubt after, um, after that email, there was never, never a question. It was just a matter of, uh, we're kids, timing. uh, timing, we're, we're kids school. in high school. We'd like to get married. <laughs> um, you know, gotta, gotta pay, you know, well, I guess I bills. was in high school. You were entering. Uh, I was entering college. That's true. Yeah. Um, 
So basically, long story short, we, we started dating shortly thereafter. She came out shortly after my graduation when we officially started dating. Um, and we had to date long distance for a, a full year, year and a half. Which can be difficult, but is also, like I said, it's so cool because you develop such good communication skills um, with each other that those skills can really help you down the line. Exactly. As a matter of fact, um, it was again, it was before even Skype, I think. So we literally just spoke on the phone almost every night. Uh, one time I went on a, uh, a hike with my buddy, Jacob. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's watching, but um, he posted a really, really nice Wayoho challenge, washing your hands challenge video. You should check him out, Jacob uh, Canaris. It's on your wall. No? It's on my wall. Check it out. It's very inspiring. Um, but I, one time he overheard me saying, you know, I went on a hikey poo today, sweetie. Uh, we were very like obnoxious like that and I kind of regret it a little bit but um, I went on a hikey poo and he never lived that down he always uh, you know it was always a hikey poo it was always a hikey poo Um, poo? and I deserved it to be honest (laughs) uh, to be fair but we did connect very deeply um, long distance for that year that first year of college Uh, we would see each other once a month on the $99 air tram flight from Boston to Akron Canyon we just take turns seeing each other um, developing that connection and again the the bulk of our dating at that stage was simply talking on the phone. And when you talk on the phone, you're getting to know each other. You're planning for your future. You're, yeah. you're being real. Um, and it was a, a very special, you know, way to, uh, to go about it. Um, and <clears throat> for the end of that year, I remember we were, um, I was lifeguarding. I was a lifeguard and, uh, Hey Ma, welcome. Um, I was a lifeguard. And Sarah, you know, was hanging out with me when I was watching the water polo club at Brandeis, a uh, cool club. And um, I remember she was having this dilemma. She should go to seminary after, uh, after high school or not. Um, and I said, uh, you know, I, I think it's important, you know, like it would be brutal to be apart 6,000 miles apart. But, you know, I, I think that I can't say no. I, I feel like this is what you need to do, you know, for our future that you need to go to some. If anyone out there watching this would like to go at some point to seminary or to yeshiva, we'd love to help make that happen. Uh, they are offering all classes remotely now, and we can help click that That's up. Any so uh, if anyone's yeah. interested. But uh, they also had these post-high school programs that Sarah went on, um, and we decided that that would be kind of like an appropriate uh, thing to do, that she should she should go on that program, even though it meant that we have to be, like I said, at about 6,000 miles. Um, I think I'm I like... Guess- I think I gave you the, the, the green light and I'm mm-hmm. like, uh, yeah, I'm like, I support it. Like, it'll be brutal. Um, my cousin, Yona, and if you're watching Yona, probably not uh, in Israel, he said, oh, she'll be in Israel and I'll be, uh, you know, the, the Israelis take good, uh, you know, they'll, they'll take good care of her, all these, you know, cool Israeli guys. I'm like, oh, thank you, Yona. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I knew I had nothing obviously to worry about, but. At that point, I wasn't convinced to go because I'm like, we talked about how hard it would be. So it really wasn't until that next that last Shabbaton in May, right before, that um, every, even though like everything seems to be weighing rationally not to go, I need to start my career, finish college, you know, get my education. Um, I wasn't gonna go, but something was just gnawing at me that finally came out. And I just remember being in that hotel in downtown Cleveland. That's your uh, Shabbaton. Yeah. Regional Shabbaton, yeah, the last one of the year. And calling you. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to a seminary and you're like, Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, yeah. deep down again, uh, deep down, I was, uh, I was, a, I was a fan. I, and we I see was, now, so hindsight is twenty twenty. We see now <clears throat> what a difference it made for our future. Yeah. yeah. Um, and essentially, that year she went. I mean, it, it was actually very difficult. Um, again, this is before smartphones. Before we had to have like a calling card. We had yeah. to have one of those tokens. Uh, way back in the day. Phones, yeah. Um, there, there's no FaceTime. There's no Zoom. There's nothing. Um, so I remember I literally had to call like the Neve, uh, like dining room and like someone picked up and had to like go find her. It was like hundreds of girls. There. Like the laundry room uh, downstairs. Uh, yeah. and, and that's kind of how it was. And it was very hard. Um, but, and at Brandeis also, so I was trying to figure out a way to be able to study abroad as a sophomore because they were very picky there. You had to go as a junior, not a sophomore. But someone told me if you make up some excuse, like academically, why well, you have to go specifically, you know, your sophomore, you're not your junior year then maybe they'll let you go. So I ended up taking on a different major, American studies, and I dropped another major, and I looked up you know, the, the course offerings the next like five years, and I made up this biggest piece of baloney I ever wrote in my whole life, uh, why I needed to be there uh, that year, and thank God uh, they approved it, and I was able to now come visit her, 
um, about four or five months after not seeing her. Um, this is my sophomore year and her, what would have been her freshman year, but it was her gap year in seminary. I think and that shows that like, even though it was so baloney, it was just meant to be that, you know, it's not just based on them. And yes, you should be grateful to them for approving it. But at the same time, like things happen when they're meant to happen. And if they're not meant to happen, then they don't. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> but um, essentially, I was able to go. I was going to su actually surprise her. Um, I came with, uh, you know, two big bags. Uh, and I was not going to tell her. I was actually going to, quote unquote, leave and then just show up one day for dinner. Um, but then I, I saw she started like ditching out on seminary classes and I felt bad. I wanted to go away from it. Classes. Didn't like missing classes. Mm -hmm. So I actually uh, brought her out to um, uh, Hadavidka Square. Anyone who's ever been in Israel, um, anyone who's ever been uh, on the uh, on the light rail, okay there, yeah. yeah. Uh, on the light rail, um, there's a stop, it's called Hadavidka. So Hadavidka, it was before the light rail, before they started tearing open Jaffa Street. And I, I pulled her aside. I said, Sarah, there's something I want to show you. And I pulled out my old uh, camera um, and I started taping. <laughs> I didn't realize. And it would have been great to propose them, but we weren't ready uh, quite then. <laughs> um, so I actually gave her, I pulled out a letter and I handed it to her. I said, here, read this. And it was my acceptance to Hebrew U. And uh, she started reading it. And, and you see her eyes open. I probably have it buried somewhere. That yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And she says, yeah. She said, wait a minute. And she used to talk like she's from Cleveland and not New York. She had this like in this great <laughs> accent. That's why you have so many bags? Because you're, you're, you're going to stay here for the whole like semester? That's why you have so many bags? And, um, and, and, and essentially, uh, and I, yeah. And I was like, and your cousins, they know? They know about this? Because we went there for Shabbos and like. They played it cool. They thank did. you, Aunt M and uh, Uncle. Uh, thank you for that. Anyway. Long story short, I know we're getting quite long. I, I give over a few pieces of, of life, uh, maybe some, some wisdom, some advice. But um, long story short, let's try to um, get, get to the end over here. That um, I listen to the story that um, we essentially spent a, a remarkable um, point in, in our life, six months in Israel, um, and we had uh, we had just taken upon ourselves kind of the traditional path of dating in a what we call a shomenigia type of setting. Um, where you're kind of meeting up, you know, for coffee and you're just talking and that's, you know, the extent of the dating. The first time that we're living um, in the same city after dating for a year and a half, you know, we made that call, which was uh, tremendous. And, and we met up in, in the uh, uh, in the bus station um, uh, where they had a great, you know, cafes and things. And then uh, coffee time with these awesome hot chocolates. And we'd literally just chat, you know, once or twice a week we'd meet up. We we're now two buses apart. Um, and we'd literally just meet up um once or twice a week and just talk for hours just planning our future and um, i brought my notebooks from seminary we would, we'd go we would trade over wisdom exactly yeah. share wisdom uh, that we learned um which is tremendous and very meaningful um we'd spend shabbos you know kind of in the same communities and with, sometimes, with family yeah. sometimes um and essentially we had like a, <clears throat> a four-year plan you know again i was a sophomore she didn't start college yet. we had a four-year plan until we could get married um as that semester uh, dragged on it became clear that that four-year plan would have to shrink. So eventually it became a two-year plan. Um, and then around Pesach time, I went to, uh, <clears throat> I went to Poland and to Kiev. Um, I assume uh, we're trying to recruit actually for a Poland trip. I assume it probably will not be happening due to everything going on. But if it will happen, we'd love for you all to join us. But at that uh, Poland trip, um, I, you know, I was very moved because my, you know, my great-grandparents were uh, you know, murdered in the Holocaust. My grandmother survived the Holocaust. And as a third generation, like Holocaust survivor, you know, one thing that I always thought about is like, how can I just like stick it to Hitler the most? You know, what can I do to just uh, trample on his memory? And the answer for me quickly became, you know, I need to build a family. I need to start, you know, uh, building. Uh, I want to build what they took away. I, I want, you know, a big family. I want lots of children. And, um, and that's, that can be my, my revenge. So I realized that uh, you know, as we're dating it and we, we deeply cared about each other and loved each other and at that point it just wouldn't have been healthy to kind of drag it on much longer we, we felt like we needed to start building you know start building together and we would figure mm -hmm. everything else out despite yeah. the fact that it didn't make a whole lot of sense uh, financially and things how that would work but we felt that was very much the right thing to do yeah. so the four-year plan building our home based on how we saw our future instead of you know we grew up in great homes but we had our own ideas of what we wanted our home to look like also just like everyone does and we were ready to start building it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, 
So essentially, we just realized that we needed to get engaged as soon as we got back to America. Um, that was in the summer. And following that, um, it, it should be as short of as an engagement as possible. And, you know, what would make sense would be, you know, we're in college, so winter break, you know, get married in the summer, we get married in winter break. Thanksgiving. <laughs> and start even maybe Thanksgiving, that'd be too tough to pull off. Um, and essentially, she came to Denver in July uh, for the purpose of getting engaged. And like any good romantic guy, I tried to you know, do my best to surprise her. So I, I brought the ring to, uh, I was going to meet her at the gate, which you can't do anymore. After 9-11, you can't meet people at the gate anymore. And um, so, 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 yeah, I mean, it was a lot, you know, oh. uh, quite a bit after 9-11. Mm -hmm. So uh, I got approval in the, I think it was the United office. So I'm like, listen, I'm trying to propose to my girlfriend. She's going to be engaged. I'm like, to surprise her. Can you hook the brother up? They're like, yeah, of course. So they gave me a, a pass. I did go through security. I put the ring on the, on, on the security belt. And these, these awesome ladies were like, is that an engagement ring? <laughs> uh, I was going through the thing. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, let me see it. And they, saw, they started crying. Is very beautiful. Um, I brought a sign. Um, that said, Sarah, will you marry him with an arrow? And I found these lovely travelers who are coming from Las Vegas getting off of a flight. Uh, they volunteered to hold it for me. Um, and they held it out. <coughs> I said, Sarah. Stop. I don't think this is a game of freeze tag. Uh, connection drop, I guess. Oh, we're back. We are back. Good old Wi Fi. Yeah. Uh, when did you lose all y'all? Uh, Just about the sign. Okay, the whole other thing is. Thank you. I'm holding a sign. Keep going. Um, we're going to try to make this quicker. I'm sorry it's gone so long. It's just, uh, yeah. Anyway, so. And there were pickles. There were and pick that's. There's a sign, pickles. Uh, roses are red. Violets are blue. I said, you're really great. I was once, no. Roses are red. I once stung by a bee. You're really great. Will you marry me? Um, everyone around in the airport who sees the engagement, they're like, woo. Uh, 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 you know, hug her. Kiss her. And I just tossed the ring to her because we're showing it again. Like, it's not like that. Like, no, stop. If anyone um, wants to hear more about Sharma Nidia, we another, can talk about it. That's like, another talk to me. Yeah, okay. For sure, for sure. Yeah, because it's okay. really cool. Um, anyway, so that's kind of it. We, we get married. Um, uh, uh, I, I did actually, um, uh, I made a picture for about two years prior to that, maybe shortly after we started dating. Remember paint? Um, and we had like a four or five year plan. There was this thing called paint. Okay. And I made this picture of us sitting at a table. Um, and I'm seeing her Asia's Kyle, and I said, five years later from now, Facebook is the picture. Um, that's me, and that's her. I'm singing Asia's Kyle, a woman of valor. This I, I sent to her in uh, 2004, two years before we got married. That's MS Paint, exactly, Microsoft Paint, I think. Yeah. So um, that was two years before we got married. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, and I, I called it was five years. So you saw how the plan just got shrunk. Yes. Anyway, so now um, there's a couple a couple takeaways. Um, the how do you know what uh, how do you know when you know piece? Um, so essentially, it's, it's very simple, and I could have given this whole talk in 30 seconds. Um, and this is really what led me to want to even talk about this right now at this stage, because I think now what we've learned is you have to ask yourself, right? Like, and we'd have never dreamed of this, you know, all those years ago. But you might actually like ask yourself, and you might say, like. In 50 years from now, I might be stuck inside with somebody for three months. Um, <laughs> that, that could be a scary thought. But as we're kind of experiencing this, this quarantine life, um, it is tremendous. I, I mean, it, it, it's magical. And we don't mean God forbid to downplay every other suffering and we're praying. And it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a tr it's such a hard time and, and we're praying. And it, it's what we call an sorry, It's a scary time. But... But it, 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 it's it's awesome to be stuck with um, you know you know with a life partner um, that you care about so much and that you would love to be stuck with. So the short answer is, how do you know when you know? Is like is, is like when 
that person that you're with is someone that in 30 years you would love to be stuck inside with for three months, that's a good chance that maybe that's the right person. Um, but also, not just would you want to be stuck with them, but you should make yourself into a person that your ideal person would want to be stuck with. Meaning, you picture who you want or what the person, the qualities, the values, what you want to build together in your future family. And you have to make yourself into the person that's deserving of that. And now is also just a perfect time that we have all this time, that our schedules are, have slowed down, um, unless you have lots of little kids at home, thank God. Um, but your schedules maybe has slowed down and there's time for self-improvement to really reflect and think about um, who am I and who do I wanna be and how do I get there? Exactly. I read, I read a beautiful article, by the way, about a, um, a great rabbi who said, now you really, uh, you're left to figure out who is the real me? What is the real me? You know, when, when there's no like kind of stigmas or pressures from the outside, you know, sometimes, you know, he talks in, in, a, in a religious context, if I'm in synagogue praying, you know, maybe I'm being carried by the inspiration of the community, but how is my prayer at home? You know, is, is that anything? Uh, sometimes we put on a facade about how we act out around everyone else. But now the kind of the real us can come out. Um, and, and it's an opportunity for us to develop uh, the real us as well. Right. Like if you always have your friends around, or if you always have Shabbos guests, then, you know, you have a routine of what you usually do. But without all those other people there, who are you? What does your Shabbos table look like? Exactly. What do you want it to look like? How do you get it there? Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, and then a, kind of a second, uh, so that was the first quick answer of how do you know when you know? Uh, would you want to be stuck with this person uh, for three months? You know, that's a good question to ask. And I think, I mean, what kind of person would you want to be stuck with? I think if anyone has yeah. done dating coaching with me, you know, we talk about top 10 lists and you want that person to be flexible, right? And to be easygoing, to be forgiving. Um, there's a lot of qualities you could think of that might be important for that person that you would be stuck with. Because if not, um, like, thank God, being stuck together has been blissful but also you have to make it blissful you know you let the little things go you just you focus on the positive um you definitely want to find someone that that's able to do that and focus on the positive things in life because if not like that just brings a person down yeah i mean it can yeah. be a very stressful time uh yeah without those kind of qualities and traits yeah. um I think a second question that, that really needs to be thought about when deciding how do you know when you know is to take a look at the great Rob Dessler's definition of love. And some of you uh, who've been around Schmorg, you know, and, and you've heard us uh, teach before, you might be familiar with this, but, but love means um, in Hebrew, um, if you really break down the word, it means to give. And the idea is that the more you give, the more you come to love. And I'm not going to kind of develop the whole like philosophical context for that right now. But, um, but, you know, uh, raising children, the more we do the diapers, the more we give to them, the more we, you know, uh, hug them when they're down, you know, the more you just intensely love them. That's kind of just how it works. And the more you give to someone, uh, the more you love them. So when thinking about, you know, how do you know when you know, I, I think we have to ask yourself is not, you know, what is this person going to give to me? You know, what's in it for me? Uh, how much can they give to me? over the next you know, uh, 120 mm -hmm. years of our life. Yeah, what are they gonna do for me? How do they make me feel? Uh, that's not right as much the question, as much as like, how much do I wanna give to this person? Right? How desperately do I wanna give to them and take care of them and love them and give everything I have to them? Uh, if you find that person and you have those feelings, again, that, that's probably a good sign. It that, should that be mutual also, not one side. Exactly. Right? exactly. But if you both feel that way, if you both feel that way and you have this mutual uh, intense desire to give, I feel like that is maybe the biggest uh, tell. Um, as a matter of fact, actually, I, I didn't know about Rob Dessler back then uh, when we got married, um, but I did actually write something similar to this um, in that note I was telling you about. Uh, I don't even think I printed it maybe, but, but basically it's a little bit gushy, so it's not really even uh, appropriate to read the whole thing. But, but basically I expressed to her on our wedding day um, just my – one of my goals in life is to, is to give to her, right? is to serve her, so to speak, uh, uh, to, to give everything I have to her and to be worthy um, of such a gift, you know, that, uh, that God blessed me with. 
um, to, to give. And I think that um, that intense desire to give uh, is something a person should ask themselves um, when trying to figure out, you know, if, if, if this is the person uh, that is the, their Bashar, if, if this is their true soulmate. If you think about it practically also within marriage, like there's so, there's so much that goes on on a daily basis that you do for each other, right? One person might make dinner, maybe you make it together and cleaning up and this and that. There's so many different things that you're really doing for each other all day long. Sorry, all, I'm trying to get back my Cleveland accent all day long. And um, that's one of my projects over quarantine. And um, so it's so necessary because if you don't feel that way, then it almost, it could become martyrdom, which is dangerous, right? You don't want anyone to be doing anything and to be like, oh, I'm really self-sacrificing for this and then, and I deserve this and that because like, that's a terrible attitude. You can't go through life happy that way. 